Hi teachers! Have questions about MAP testing? In this video, we'll cover some basic information about the MAP growth test, including questions you may have about preparing for it, what happens on the day of the test, and the role of the testing proctor. And we'll share some links to resources mentioned in this video in the description. First, let's start with the basics. What is the MAP growth test? How do students interact with it? And how long does it take? MAP growth measures student achievement and academic growth over time between testing sessions, usually fall, winter, and spring. The test is adaptive, taken on computers, and aims to constantly change the difficulty of questions so that a tester only gets 50% of the questions correct. This shows us the sweet spot of where a student is on their learning journey. That means that no two tests are alike, as no two students will receive the same questions in the same sequence. Out of thousands of possible test items, students will receive about 43. Map Growth has tests for math, reading, language usage, and science. The most popular tests are math and reading, and those are the ones we'll discuss in this video. Your school or district will decide which subjects to test, and all of the selected tests are usually completed within a week or two. The test is taken on computers. Schools will develop a testing plan that lays out time and location as best suited to your needs. Your testing coordinator can answer specific questions about your school's device plan and testing times. School devices will usually access the test through an app on the desktop, while BYOD devices can access through a URL. Your testing coordinator should communicate with you on whether you need to reserve devices or computer labs or remind students to bring their own. The length of the test depends on the type of test, reading or math, age of the testers, and the students themselves. For most students, a testing session will take between 45 and 55 minutes, with some students finishing early with a quiet activity and some needing an additional session to finish their test. Depending on the length of your classes, one MAP growth testing session could be completed in a class period. But as this test isn't timed and all students are different, you may need longer. Your testing coordinator will communicate your plan to you. Next, let's discuss the time prior to the test. The test isn't something to study for or even teach during class, but familiarizing students with the test interface and question formats, even if they've tested before, can help decrease test anxiety and enhance result integrity. In the week leading up to the test, allow students to interact with the practice test. This is a time for students to familiarize themselves with item functionality like select all and drag and drop. This practice interface can be accessed either in the app on student devices or by a URL that we'll link below. The username and password are both grow. In the practice test, students can explore the tools they'll see at the top of the real test screen, like the line reader and notepad. This is also where calculator and geometry tools will appear when such tools are allowed. Because these digital tools are provided, all students need to bring to the test is paper and pencil, should they wish to work something out before submitting their answer. Students with accommodations may have additional items they are permitted to bring. We'll link some student-facing videos below, like getting ready for the test, going over the toolbar tools, and even a video for students on avoiding rapid guessing. One last thing. For K-2 students, the test includes human-recorded audio, so they'll need headphones. Students in grades three and up with an auditory accommodation can also have headphones to listen to question and answer options via the text-to-speech accommodation. This accommodation can be turned on in the testing session, which we'll cover in the next section of this video. Now let's talk about testing day. We'll be using the word proctor to refer to the person overseeing a testing session. This could be you, the teacher, or another administrator. Let's go over some proctor questions. On the day of the test, students will navigate to their testing session through an ID and password that the proctor writes on the board. A testing session can be set up prior to the day, either by a testing coordinator or by individual proctors, and essentially serves as the testing dashboard. It's a list of the test takers in the room and live updates on each test taker's progress during the test. This is where proctors will populate the list, assign accommodations, admit test takers into the test after verifying that Jonas is indeed taking the test labeled Jonas, monitor which question each tester is on, and pause and suspend test sessions. 
let's talk about pausing, suspending, and terminating sessions. A pause can last for up to 30 minutes should a tester go to the bathroom or need to get water. A pause for longer than 30 minutes will automatically suspend the test session. Suspending a session is if a tester needs to stop taking the test because they ran out of time or they needed to suddenly leave. A test can remain suspended for 28 days to allow the tester to continue. Termination should only be done when directed by an administrator. It completely erases the current test in session and requires a tester to start over. This is rarely needed. So proctors, you're gonna mostly hang out with the pause and suspend buttons. Let students know that when the test is paused for a bathroom break or suspended because they didn't finish, testers will receive a fresh question when they return to the test to prevent cheating, but it will still be of the same item difficulty. During the test, proctors don't need to worry too much about students sharing answers because each test is completely different. However, some students may rush through the test, what we call rapid guessing. Our software will detect this and pause the student's test with a visit from the slowdown sloth. He's right behind me, isn't he? The proctor will be notified via the test session dashboard and can come over to the student's desk to remind them to slow down, take their time, and do their best. Then they can enter their proctor pin to unlock the student's test with a fresh question. Based on your school's policy, your testing coordinator will let you know what to do if students finish early. Kobe! Ah! Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Probably not play basketball. If a student does not finish, that's okay. Suspend the test. Your testing coordinator will plan a time for students to finish. Some schools have a feature enabled so that students receive their scores when they complete the last question. Other schools disable this feature so that teachers, instructional coaches, and administrators can review student scores and communicate them with students and families later. Your testing coordinator can answer this for you, so you can let students know if they'll see a score at the conclusion of the test. Hopefully you feel a bit more informed about what to expect and how to prepare your students for map growth testing. Check out the links below for helpful student and teacher facing videos, and hey, good luck during testing.